right, expecting a high shot, went right down in between his legs. 10-18, Karlamov getting his second goal for the Soviet. The puck is in the Canadian zone. Ten eighteen was the time of the fourth Soviet goal, and the Soviets are great front runners. And they show there's a loose puck in front of the Russian goal. Bergman finally took a shot. But the Canadian team, where they got took advantage in the early part of the game, are unable to do so now. A quick break now for Mikhailov coming down with Petrov centered in front. Bergman failed to clear it right in front of the net. And that was a close call with Blinov being there and planting on it. Canadian team come to center ice. Couldn't get any farther. Mihailov cleared it back into the Soviet zone. Esposito centered out in front. And Mihailov nearly tipped one in past Pritchak. It was close. Blinov comes racing down. With There's a shot on Dryden as Petrov. As they skate at you hard at the blue line. Team Canada is coming to the blue line. Esposito, Mahovlitz, they're all waiting for the play on the blue line. The Soviets are skating down hard at the defenseman. They're pushing Team Canada's defense back into their end, and it's leaving a great area in the top of the slot, the top of the circles, and the Soviets are taking advantage of this. Yakushev, Shadron, and Zeman are out there for the Soviet team, and a quick shot on Dryden right after the faceoff. When a club does skate down at you hard, the defensemen have to back up a little faster, which gets them into their end, deeper into their end, a lot quicker than normal. Clark Henderson out there with Ellis for Canada as Yakushev is ready for the faceoff. The puck goes to the corner of the point, clearing it back to the net ceiling, comes over on the right side. Hasn't got that puck out yet. Shadron kept it in. Then Zeman, number 11, clears into the corner. It's back to the blue line. A shot in front of the net. And it rolls off to the corner with Yakushev after it again. Into the corner for Sh Shadron. Then Zeman keeping it back to the blue line. Polediev gets his shot right on. And Dryden didn't seem to know where that was going. Canadian team finally get it out. Ellis. Over to Clark. The pass was too far. Here's Ellis trying to get the return, and Yakushev recovers. A forward pass to Shadron. Shadron, 19, passes over to Zeman. Zeman is upset by Henderson, who goes into the corner, holds it against the boards as much as he can. Zeman knocked it loose. Comes back to Zeman, back of the net. The Soviets still have possession. Zeman laying it back and over the line. Vladiev skates back to his own blue line as they start making changes. Now, it's going to be a penalty on the play. The goalkeeper skates off, and it's a penalty to Canada. This game is game one from Montreal. Here's a look at Gila Point. From the faceoff, Canada get the draw, only to shoot it wide of the net. And the Canadian team are a man short. The Soviets have the edge as Mikolov cleared it over the line. Maltsev tried to clear out in front. Red Berenson had it hit a skate. Canada bring it back slowly to center ice. And Park didn't follow through. Maltsev lost it, only to have the defense player, Sagankov, let Maltsev take it over the line again. They're crowding around. Every man is up for the Soviet into the corner. Watch this passing. Quick pass over to Siganov. Over to Lechenko. Back to Sigdankov. Right on. And Dryden made the save. But they always get that puck on the goal. Foster, that was a perfect example of the setup that the Russians use on their power play. At one time, they had three men stationed across the blue line. Now, Zagankov, who is a defenseman, will then walk right into the slot here, and that's where normally a Phil Esposito 
or one of the top goal scorers in the NHL will be standing. But in this case, it's a defenseman. So they go out there as a unit of five. They're interchangeable people, and they will go into any position they have to where the opportunity creates itself. Berenson and Maltz have faced off. The Soviets got the draw only momentarily, and it's lobbed down the ice. Canadians seem a bit tired as they clear the puck down the ice. Defense player Sugankov clears ahead now to Maltsev. Maltsev, number 10 at center, going over the line with Karlamov. He fanned on his shot. Sealing couldn't clear the puck. It goes back to the net. Comes back to Lechenko. Lechenko, number three, giving a chance for Vikolov. Vikolov shoots, and that was wide in the corner of the net. Maltsev in the corner, and they're still playing tic-tac-toe with that puck. And it's finally shot down the ice by Peter Mahovlich with Sugankov clearing a forward pass to Lechenko. Ahead now to Blinov. Blinov going in, number nine. Lost the puck, Mahovlich shooting it, but not out. Here's a chance, a shot by Petrov was blocked on that play. Another pass by Gusev goes wide. Mahovlich starting back, going in the clear, going down to the shot. And he hit the side of the net. It was on the outside. And that's where the fog seems to be starting around that Soviet goal. Down the far wing for Blinov, cutting in on the defense. Here's a shot, a weak one, off Sealing's ankle. Goes back to the goal. Ori ahead to the point to center ice. Stopped at the Soviet line. Another quick break by Mihailov. Mihailov is knocked down on the play. A shot goes wide. And they're certainly drilling them. Gusev stands there. Number two gets the shot away. It bounced off Park. Here's another chance. Petrov passed in front instead of shooting. Mahovlich took his man out. It's cornered in the corner. Lapointe takes his pass. Cleared it over the blue line to Park. Going down with Esposito on his right. Esposito cutting it on goal. Petriak stopped it. And Park just missed on the rebound. The Soviet upset. Yakushev gets away at center ice after upsetting the Canadian player. Yakushev overskated the puck. It's still in there, intercepted by Cornoye and Petrov of the Soviet. Was stopped too. Now Bergman at center to Esposito to Henderson as the Canadian team are changing on the goal. Soviet leading 4-2, 3.32 left in the second period, and the Soviets have had a good edge in this second period. They've given a great example of team play, a loose puck in front of that net. They're always threatening. Shadron had his chance. Number 19, cleared pass over that far wing. Good chance off for Ori down the wing, and he was, ran into the official and was checked by the referee. Return pass to center ice. Shadron gets it across to Yakushev. Yakushev checked by the Ranger player Hadfield. And it goes right back into the Soviet zone. Brought out again by Palediev. Quick move by Shadron. A quick shot was uh, right on there. And Dryden had to be very good. Now Hadfield breaks out. Going down with Rattel, going into the corner. He's watched by Palladia. If they jam in there, Shadron was there too. With the score, the Soviets four and Canada two. This is game one from Montreal. All set for the face-off in the Soviet zone. Rattel is taking it. Shadron got the draw, cleared a forward pass. Karlamov coming in very fast. His pass was knocked down. Gilbert recovering after Bergman made the stop. But they're certainly skating, these Soviets. A rolling pass and a quick pass down to Maltsev. Maltsev back at center ice with Vikolov. Vikolov takes the pass. Karlamov was trailing there, but the puck didn't get reach him. Rattel for Canada is turned around by Karlamov, they mix it up a bit. Puck is still loose, Bergman coming out for Canada, over to Gilbert, back to Bergman, across the line. Sugankov stopped him. 
It rolls out at center. Maltsev is beaten to the puck by Park, number five for Canada. Puck rolls to Bergman again. Bergman knocks it off the boards to Peter Mahovlich. Here's a shot. And Tretiak covering that angle perfectly on every shot. Just as no room anywhere. Karlamov gets the puck back to Ragolin for the Soviets to Maltsev, number 10. Maltsev up over the line, a long shot. Dryden stopped it. Clear to the side to Peter Mahovlich with Red Berenson at center. Mickey Redmond on the right side, offside. And it's called back to the Soviet blue line with one minute and 15 seconds remaining. Soviets four, Canada two. There's a look at Alexander Ragulin. 220 pounds, six feet. He's been in international hockey since 1963. Well, he's been rejuvenated, Brian. I think he's certainly moving fairly fast tonight. Lean off, goes over the line. Here's the close in. Mihailov goes right in on goal. Mihailov was right in on Dryden. They both fell to the ice. This fellow Mihailov is really going in there. Now watch them get to the puck to the outside. Mihailov comes in very low. He's going down. Dryden, good concentration. Gets the pads up to smother the play. Face off in Canada's zone to the left of Dryden. Petrov will take the face off. Now Ellis comes out. Replacing. Foster, Team Canada is having to expend so much energy in getting the puck in their own end that when they do actually get a rush, they seem to be tired out. The puck is still in the Canadian zone. Peter Mahovlich passed it right onto Petrov's stick. Petrov shot one, and it went over the glass into the crowd. 51 seconds remaining in the second period. Team Canada here is looking for uh, breakout patterns that will get them up the ice, get them moving up the ice with some momentum, with some good speed, with some good puck control. The Soviets are intercepting almost everything they tried. On the face-off, Canada gets the draw, but they didn't clear it out. It's Sealing now shooting it out off Clark's stick to center ice. Blinov, number nine, left it for Kuzkin. Forward pass to Mihailov went astray there against the boards. Puck rolls over into the Soviet zone, and Gusev, number two, clear to the center ice. Now ceiling for Canada, going up over the line, tried a lob pass. Gusev outguessed him by stopping with his skate. Lean off, passed right in front of his own goal, and Kuskin cleared a long forward pass into the Canadian zone. Ceiling going back, and it's called for icing. This has been wonderful hockey to watch if you realize that they've gone at times for three and four minutes without even a whistle. And that was one of the few straight passes that the Soviets have made, or in fact, Team Canada. I think this has been as good hockey as I can remember seeing for many years, Foster. Right. And the amazing thing is that Canada scored the first two goals, and the Soviets have come back with four in a row without a reply from Canada. Harry Sinden's got to get Frank Mahovitz going again, and I can see him talking to him right now. Frank has to be a key player on this team. When Frank Mahovitz wants to play hockey, there is no greater hockey player in the world. One thing is very noticeable, I think, Brian, and that is the Canadian team have yet to produce a leader. They're uh, still going in as individuals, and no one seems to get them really going. Clark trying to get that draw from the faceoff with Liapkin. It goes down the ice. And it's going to be called for icing. And the face-off will be brought back. Foster, I can just imagine the Team Canada and the Soviets. I mean, the, the heat in this building is tremendous. And they must just be very, very tired players right now. And it's very tough for them to get up for this. From the face-off, they just had to drop the puck. And the period ends. With the score, the Soviets four and Canada two. This is game one from Montreal. Well, the Soviets went uh, into the second period uh, tied 2-2 after a stirring first period, but they indicated they were well on their way and improving every move. And it was Harlamov who scored two goals in that second period to uh, more or less break it wide open for the Soviet team, 240 and 10 18 were the times of the two Soviet goals. 
previously, Esposito had scored for Canada, and Henderson made it 2 nothing. Then Zeman got the first one for the Soviet, and Petrov tied it up. And so it's a 4-2 game going into the last period when the Russians seem to be in control at this stage. Foster, at the end of this game, there will be a special presentation uh, to each uh, of the Canadian and Soviet series. A panel of writers and broadcasters will select the outstanding player from each team in each game. The player will be represented, or uh, presented, excuse me, with a hockey ring created especially for this series by the CTV and CBC television networks and the sponsors of these hockey telecasts. The presentation will take place immediately after the game on the ice surface. And Brian, the official attendance at tonight's game, 18,818. 18,818. I don't it must know. Be if, a record, isn't well, it? I'm not sure if it uh, is a record or not, but if it isn't, there certainly isn't an empty seat in the Montreal Forum tonight. And I imagine there are uh, quite a few really shocked. And incidentally, in this uh, third period, they'll go 10 minutes and then they change ends. That's according to the international rules. And then they have, of course, the, the last 10 minutes in that position. So it's a something unusual for Canadian fans to see, but that's what happens in international hockey. They split the uh, last period in half. And now we're lining up for the last desperate drive in the last period, and the Canadian team will have to improve to get back into contention. Petrov is out there with Mihailov and Glinov for the Soviet. Kuskin rushes in on the clearing pass, and Glinov Comes right back, number nine at center for the Soviet. In on the defense, he's turned around by Bergman with Esposito clearing ahead on the left side to Cornoye with Gusev going back to that. A loose puck, Canada recovery. Esposito had him, he gets shot in front of the net. Another lob went wide. And Esposito had a great chance there. Back come the Soviet team down the right side from Mihailov. And he shot wide. It goes over to Petrov, who knocked it into the corner. Park playing it around back of the net with Mahovlich clearing on the right wing. Too far. Petrov broke it up. Klinov tried to go in on that side. Stopped by Park. Park holds it momentarily long enough for a face-off with Petrov standing by. Once again, a good example of the tremendous strength the Soviets have along the boards. Brad Park made a good move to try and get away from him. The Soviets managed to hook him and hold him up against the boards. Park had no alternative but to freeze the puck. That's Yuri Blinoff leaving the ice. He only is about 5 feet 7 inches. He weighs 157 pounds, but it's 157 pounds of muscle. Zeman, Shadron, and Yakushev going out there for the Soviet. And Clark. Ellis and Henderson for Canada. The point is on there with Sealing, and the long shot goes into the corner. Zeman cleared to his teammate Shadman, who goes in back of the net, stopped by Clark. They pass it back, and the defensive pair of Lyapkin and Palladio have to go back for it. Starting again, a pass is loose at center ice. Finally grabbed off by Yakushev. Henderson goes in ahead of him. Paul Henderson couldn't get loose, but Clark does down the left side at center. And the puck goes into the corner. Ellis shunted his man out of position and then was knocked over. Puck goes to one side, cleared over onto the far wing. The Apkin up to center ice, 25, shoots it around back of the net, dried and let it go to one side. Henderson lost it, but it's cleared by LaPointe, but not out. On in and back of the net. Zeman is going into the corner. Number 11 jammed there, held against the boards. The puck is loose, though. LaPointe plays it ahead to Henderson, up on the wing, and Redmond, now on the right side, had to stop. Now Redmond getting a chance, 24. The drive was right on there, and Tritiak came up with a big one. Up to center ice for Shadron. Over the line, stopped at the defense, and it's lobbed out to center ice. Yakushev playing it back. 
the second cough as they change on the go, both teams. Harlamov, the star of the game so far, going down that right si left side, was stopped by Park, and Red Barons have cleared, but not out. Here's another chance, but Harlem Harlamov was stopped. A return rush by Canada, Redmond going in, pass to an open wing, and there's the team play that doesn't exist at times. Harlamov going down that left wing for the Soviet. Dropped a pass over to Vikolov. To one side for Maltsev. He shoots it over onto the far wing. Soviet keep it in there. The quick pass is knocked down. They get it again. Har Harmalov coming right in front of the goal. Takes a shot at Bryden. Grabbed it and they just don't stop him. There's Harmalov who seems to be here, there, and everywhere. You're looking at Harlamov has to be their top player. Now, he's a complete hockey player. Look at the footwork here. He loses it, kicks it up, gets it back into a place to shoot. The second it's on his stick, it's gone. Dryden was called upon to make a big save. You notice how Bergman is backing right in on his defense, or on his goaltender, and this is causing Dryden a lot of trouble getting a good, clear chance to see the puck. All set for the face-off with Petrov knocking it wide. Bergman going in back of the net. Still a slight fog coming off the ice. The puck goes bouncing into the crowd as Hatfield was checked. Puck is in front of the uh, Canadian blue line. You can see that fog coming up off the ice there. Must be disturbing to the players. Hatfield now starts down the left side and it's shot right back to center ice where Park plays it across to Bergman. Bergman for Canada, drove one into the Russian bench. And the Soviets really ducked on that one. Face-off is going to be just to one side of the regular spot. Rattel now going to center with Hatfield and Gilbert on the wings. Mihailov, Petrov, and Blinov are out there for the Soviet. Kuzkin. On the defense, backing up at center ice, tap that puck into the crowd, number four. Soviets here are getting a little more confidence now. You can see on that last shift, Karlamov came out there. He did some of his fancy stick work. There's a look at Brad Park leaving the ice. Good solid shift by Brad Park. Vic Hadfield, number 18, Jean Rattel. But that New York unit has not yet been able to combine as the unit they must. The crowd's and trying to pick them up here. Esposito is now at center ice. Pernoye is over on that right wing. Mahovlich, Frank Mahovlich on the left. Shadron is at center ice for the Soviet with Yakushchev and Zeman on the wings. Zeman 11. Puck is over on that far side. The Apkin and Polodev are on the defense for the Soviet. Down the right wing for Zeman, gets his shot away, and it was a rising drive that was about a foot off the target, went into the crowd. You can see the fog coming off the ice there now. It seems to be getting worse all the time. It's interesting when you see the Soviets slap the puck like that. That's a habit that I, I think they picked up from the North American hockey. All set, the puck is dropped. Canada recovers LaPointe on the defense with ceiling, goes in back of the net. LaPointe getting lots of extra work after the first period. Now LaPointe coming up over the line to center ice, cleared it on into the corner. The Afghan recovered momentarily. Palladiev took a jolt. The puck rolls around Esposito, who's had some great chances, nearly had one there. And the puck is shot down the ice into the Canadian zone. And the Soviets will be called back. With the score, the Soviets four and Canada two. This is game one from Montreal. A face-off will be in the Soviet zone. Maltsev is ready for the face-off, but Clark moves away. Phil Esposito must feel a li little bit like he's in that series against Montreal a few years ago. Just can't click around that net tonight. Now a quick pass on the right side. Vikolov took a long shot, another hot one too. Harlamov took another whack, then he bumps in 
to Sealing, gave him a jolt, Rob rec recovered that puck, second puck was right on, another shot, right back there by Maltsev, and it was off the target, and that fog is getting quite bad in the Canadian zone. Soviets still keep it in there, Harlamov just keeping a string on that puck, finally it's cleared out by LaPointe, Ellis tried to go down the right side, then Clark followed him, passed to Henderson who knocked it to the corner, Raglan was there to stop it, and they lob it out. Malt, Maltsev was able to drive it to center. It's right back in again. Raglan getting it across to Sagankov. Sagankov passes on the right wing. Harlamov going back from center ice, back into his own zone, being watched by Peter Mahovlich, and Raglan played it over on the far side to Vikolov, number 18. Now Canada starts to move. Redmond failed to get across. Carried back by Blinov. Blinov going down that left wing. A hard shot, but off the target. From the side, a rolling pass. Blinov gets a whack at it. Bergman stopped him, and he, you could hardly see him in the fog as he fell. A quick pass goes to the side. They're right in front of another shot. Right and stop that one. And it goes back to the goal. A very close call. Leanoff was right in on that play. Now Canada with Red Berenson up to center. He couldn't get by Petrov. Mahovlich, Peter Mahovlich is forced back by Petrov. He goes in front of his own net, cutting over on the right wing, a forward at center to Redmond, who lobbed it right on to Gusev's stick. A roller was intercepted by Red Berenson, but to no avail. Park. Number five for Canada is watched by Mihailov and Bergman played it out to center ice to Esposito, who's out now at center with Mihailovic on one wing and Cornoye is out on the right wing for Canada. Quick pass to Petrov. He shoots it down the ice. Yakushev was coming on at the time. Foster, what Team Canada hasn't been able to do in this game so far is slow down the play. The tempo has been too fast. Mr. Pearson is uh, coming into view there, and the Prime Minister. The face-off is going to be brought up into the Soviet zone. Esposito is uh, pointing to indicate where the players should stand. Mahovlich couldn't control the puck. Shadron getting it over to Yakushev. Yakushev leaves it back at his defense. A forward to Shadron. Stopped, but offside as Esposito couldn't get out in time as Pernoye was trying to move in. Foster, as I was saying earlier there, one of the things that Team Canada hasn't been able to do, and they must get Bobby Orr into this series, because they need a player who can control the tempo. If they have to play it at this fast pace, they will not be able to beat the Soviets. From the face-off, the puck goes into the corner. They're jamming there. The puck is loose, though. Here's a pass that goes astray. Zeman brings it out. Yakushev going down with them. They shoot it around back of the goal. It's into the corner. Back to the blue line at center. It's grabbed off by Cornoye coming in with a pass to Mahovlich right in. And he failed to lift the puck over Tetriak. Another shot on Tetriak, who is very steady. That one by Sealing. I don't think Frank Mahovlich would have missed that in the middle of the season. He fought for control of the puck, and this will happen. They've, they've been practicing for three days. Perfect play by Cornoye. Now, Frank's struggling with it on his backhand. Doesn't quite get the control he needs to lift the puck up to the top of the net. When a goaltender comes out that far on you, you have to get the puck up. It is a great chance, and a goal at this stage is very important one way or the other. Henderson for Canada centers out to Ellis. He's to score! Clark deflected that one into the net. Clark from Henderson and Ellis. And the game has opened up again. That makes it Soviets 4, Canada 3. 
That was a beautiful shot by Ronnie Ellis because he was smart enough to keep the puck on the ice. He's shooting from a perfect area. Bobby Clark parked right on the goal step and he just tips it in and is he happy? A big goal for Canada because they now have 11 and a half minutes left and it's now anybody's hockey game. This will really stir them up. This is what was needed for Canada. Now then Canada on the move. A shot right on Petriac. The crowd are going wild. Park going from the corner. Tried to center out to Clark, who gets it back in the corner. And Maltsev is stopped with a Henderson getting the pass. Clark deflected that one into the net to give Can put Canada back in the game. Four to three for the Soviet. It's Sagankov clearing down the right side, closing right in front of the net. And the puck is batted down to the Soviet blue line. And the players change as they go along. Raglan clearing ahead to Harlemov. Henderson and Ellis got assists on Clark's goal to make it four to three for the Soviet and put Canada back in the game. Here they come again. Canada moving up over the line. Redmond takes a pass to Mahavlich who missed it. Sealing takes a shot. It, Red Berenson recovers out off to the side. It goes into the corner. Lapointe fights for that puck, shooting it back in the net. Redmond cleared it back, back into the corner to him. Vikolov plays it out now and the Soviet come back with Maltsev alone and they're a little shaky at the moment under Canadian pressure. Lapointe starting a rush. Fed it up to center ice and here's the halfway mark in the period. This is game one from Montreal. Ten minutes to go, and the fans are going wild all over the country, and right here. They're just standing up and cheering, go Canada, go. Canada needs one more goal to tie it up. The puck goes to Bergman to center ice to Esposito, who is checked quickly by Petrov. Over to Blinov, into the corner, Park squeezed him out. It goes back to the goal, and what a torrid contest this is. Bernoye playing it over too far for Mahavlich, grabbed off by Kuskin, fed to Mihailov, and he is checked. Now Esposito going down with Bergman. He just failed to get the pass. Bergman and Kuskin go in back of the net, and the Soviets shoot it down the ice. Park is going back for it. It's sliding slowly over the line, and that ice is very sticky. Foster, I don't think there's any hockey game in history that has had more people watching it. There are people all over the world seeing this game on television in the Soviet Union, all over Europe, Canada, the United States. And I, it's a tremendous hockey game too, Brian. It has everything. I think that goal by Bobby Clark has shaken the Soviets' confidence a little bit here. They seem to go back in a bit of a shell. And they're now not so confident with only a one-goal lead. And this is what Team Canada needs. That will slow the tempo down. Team Canada is now starting to get the edge, and they're pulling it away from the Soviets again. Clark is at center with Henderson and Ellis. The puck goes to the corner. Vladia failed to clear it out. Another try by the same player, 26. Lost it. Canada coming in right on goal. Oh, that was close. As Henderson had a drive from close in. Again, Lyapkin cleared it over on the far wing. And a race for the puck, Shadron is skated off. The Soviet recover again outside the Canadian line, shoot it in. Zeman took a good bump from Ellis. Henderson tried to get a pass. It rolls out at center ice. And the puck goes high into the crowd when LaPointe was checked on that far side by the Canadian bench. Harry Sinden has good reason to be happy with this Clark, Ellis, and Henderson line because there's no question that they are playing the best as a unit, and it shows every time they're out on the ice. Bobby Clark, I personally believe, is probably the best four checker in the National Hockey League today. He's certainly doing great guns tonight. 8.40 left in the game, 4-3 to three for the Soviet, and Canada fighting hard to get back into a tie at least. Park goes back on a clearing shot behind his own goal. Rattel is out on the forward line. Gilbert and Hadfield. Rattel, 18, played it over on the far side to Hadfield. He drives it into the corner. A race for the puck. 
Lachenko will stop. Rattel centered it. Tritjak stopped it. Lachenko stopped by Hadfield. Hadfield trying to dig it out from back of the net, and the play is stopped with Sagankov and Lachenko covering him. And that fog persists. The fog does persist. It has to be a bit of a distraction because they play the puck in their feet so often, Foster, when there's fog like that. It just is a bit of a distraction, and when you have your head down, you don't want to get corked. On the face-off, Canada gets the puck again. Rattel centered out in front of Gilbert. Gilbert centered it, and Hadfield failed to get the pass. Zagankov cleared out as Maltsev comes up at center ice. Maltsev, number 10, keeps on going past Park into the corner. Stopped by Gilbert and given a jolt against the boards by Hadfield. Lachenko couldn't cover his man. It's brought to center by Rattel. Gilbert races after it, gets it back of the net, centers it, and Mahovlich let a high one go. Soviet stop, Lachenko. Maltsev stop. And Peter Mahovlich going in with Redmond. A drive is wide. And the Canadian team are fighting with everything. The puck slides out to center ice. The point. Played it over to the open wing. The point goes after it. Drives it on into the corner for Canada. In back of the net. And Lachenko clears the forward pass to Mihailov. Lachenko stopped. Oh, Mahavlich had a royal chance there. Redmond bumps around with Sagankov. Sagankov is shoved around by Redmond. And that nearly started something, but... Peter Mahovlich had a great chance there from about 20 feet out. It's inevitable that the pressure's going to build up, and Guy Lapointe is a very uh, highly strung. Now, look, at here's a great shot by Mahovlich. Now, Tretjak comes out, cuts the angle down. What's he had to shoot at? Nothing but Tretjak. He picks it out of the air. Redmond comes steaming into the goal crease, and, of course, the Soviet teammates come to defend their goaltender. But Foster... I have to be totally impressed by Team Canada. They are putting out a tremendous effort here, and it's... Pernoye had a quick shot from the face-off there and just missed by two inches. Pernoye gets it back to Mahovlich. They're really battling. A pass goes astray. Blinov comes right back for the Soviet. Passes to Mihailov, coming in on goal. Oh, he scores! Mihailov went right in to score and give the Soviet a 5-3 to three lead. This goal is an example of not having coordinated team play. No one was sure who to take Mihail off, so what's he do? He keeps the puck, he walks right into the slot. Now they back away from him, he goes into the middle. He's all alone now, he's walking into the prime scoring area. What's he do? He puts a good backhand in the far corner. Dryden didn't have much of a chance on that goal. There's one thing about the Soviets, they really can put that puck into the net when they get a chance. Mihailov was the one who did the trick. And now it's five to three for the Soviets. Here's another in front of the net as Yakushev stole the puck but missed the net. Puck is at center ice. It's cleared over the line to Zeman and Canada recovers. Zeman goes right after it, centers it out. Chadron had a drive that was wide. Soviet keep it in. The Apkin had a shot. Mahovlich tried to get it clear, drives it to the corner. Frank Mahovlich starts down the left side, but the Soviet had the speed to cover on the play. The puck rolls back into the Soviet zone. Vladiev deflected one off Chadron's stick. Yakushev. Got up over the line. Here they're closing in. Seaman gets right in. He scores! Seaman went rushing right in to score for the Soviet. This is what the Soviets do. They score in bunches. They'll get you when you, you, you're down a little bit. Now, Seaman just coasts in here. He miscues here with the puck. He's tripped up a little bit right there, but it comes back up to his stick. Dryden has already made his move, and he buries it in the far corner. Dryden made the move on that first anticipated shot. When he missed cued, he was very lucky that it kicked back up to his foot and he got by Dryden with his stick and threw it in the far side. Brothers, 
unassisted for Zeman, 14-29, and it makes it 6-3 for the Soviet, a mix-up with Ellis in the corner there. They just rolled around a bit. It Foster, was, the tolerance level of a Soviet hockey player has to be higher than anybody. With the score, the Soviets 6 and Canada 3. This is game one from Montreal. 5.15 remaining in the game. The Soviet have burst into a big lead again, 6 to 3. And the Soviet get a penalty. High sticking is the call for that last play. Team Canada has to take advantage of this penalty now. They've got to get good control, and they have to get the shots at Tretiak. I think Tretiak so far has probably been the biggest surprise in this game. I don't think anybody expected him to become the goaltender he has in this game. He's been cool on Phil Esposito. He's skated right out and stopped Frank Mahovlich. He's playing the slap shot better than I ever thought I'd see him do it. He's very sharp. Rattel is out there at center, got the draw at center, and in front of the net, a shot! Mahovlich thought it was in the net, but Tretiak kept it out, and it's Phil Esposito going back to get it. Canada putting on another drive after the Soviet came rushing back with a couple of fast goals. The Soviet break it up at center ice. It was Vikolov that did it, and Sealing falls back of his own net, tipped it to Esposito back of the goal. Esposito playing it over on the right side, and that uh, splurge by the Soviets has uh, more or less taken some of the steam out of the Canada attack. Buster, a power play attack has to come up the ice with momentum. Team Canada does not have the momentum. Because there isn't this great coordination between your defensive pair and your forward line, they are coming up, the defensemen are carrying the puck up, the forward line isn't absolutely sure whether they should be breaking or waiting. Petrov is going to center ice, and Mishikov is getting a turn. He hasn't been out there uh, very often. So uh, they're throwing in some of the reserves for the Soviets. But Petrov is still at center ice, but this is all part of the penalty killing. That's why Mishikov is in there, likely. Buck is back of the goal, Park. Gets that puck for Canada. Soviets are still a man short, up to center ice. Rattel couldn't get anywhere. Park recovers, goes over the line. Park faked a shot, goes into the corner, shoots, and it's deflected high into the crowd. But the Soviet team just seemed to have a player on the attacker every time. They don't give you many chances, but again, we saw an example. Brad Park making a good individual effort, but there is no teamwork. He didn't quite know who to pass it to, so he played it himself. The Soviet player takes him into the corner, puts the stick on the ice, deflects it off into the crowd. There's Karmalov, who I have to feel is probably one of the top Soviet players. From the face-off, Bergman couldn't keep the puck in and has to go back to get it at center ice. Park takes the pass, then back to Bergman at the blue line. Petrov watching him. They shoot it over the line into the corner for Sagankov. They jam into the corner. The Soviets recover. It's a quick move with Mishakov coming up with Petrov, who fired the shot high, hit the glass. Dryden played it over into the corner. And Canada come again on a four-man drive. Esposito at center is crowded a bit on the play. Mishakov covered. Then Gilbert tries to help out, going into the co corner covered by Sagankov, and they hold it there for a face-off. The Soviets have taken over control again. For about three or four minutes, Team Canada really picked it up. When they got that goal by Bobby Clark, it looked like they had the momentum to maybe get the goal to tie it up. The Soviets were running around a little bit. They'd lost their confidence. They went back in the shell, but they picked up a couple of goals. They now know that they've got the game in good control, so they're not going to take any chances. I have to say, Foster, I am really impressed with the, the gutsy effort that Team Canada came up with there because these men out there, they have to be tired. They're not in the, in the top physical condition yet. We know that, and they'll play better hockey as this series progresses. Berenson got the draw. Is a shot right on. Tetriak made the save again on Peter Mahovlich. Soviets shoot it down the ice. 
Mishikov let it go. And uh, now the Soviet team are at full strength again. The big thing that Harry Sinden now has to be asking himself, because I'm sure everybody else in the world will be, did he pick the right 19 players? I can only say I believe he did pick the right 19 players for one reason. They showed the best in training camp. You have to go with them. Lichenko and Kuskin are now on the Soviet defense. Maltsev is going to center ice. Harlamov and Vikolov are the forwards as the puck is cleared out to center ice. Berenson for Canada with Redmond and Peter Mahovlich. They just drive it back into the Soviet zone. 2.59 left in the game, and the Soviets have a commanding lead, leading 6-3. to three. Now Peter Mahovlich from the side, center back to Redmond. He went off his stick. He drives it away wide. It goes to the corner. Vikolov let Peter Mahovlich get it back to Bergman. A shot is wide. Redmond fired it right back, missed. Bergman having a try, shoots it into the corner. Kuskin shoots it back of the net. Redmond tried to center it out, hit Lachenko skate, and the Soviet come right back with Harlamov coming up over the Canadian line. Still has it, still has it. Finally lost it when Redmond came racing out and then was knocked over. Soviet coming up with 2.12 left in the game. Harlamov was stopped by Redmond, with going down with Berkman on the right side. He played it off the boards to Redmond. He fired it in front, and the puck is shot down the ice. 1.56 left in the game. Soviets leading 6-3 to three in a tremendous hockey game here, the first of a series that promises to be sensational. Now the point goes up, getting in close, right in. And again, that Pritchak was steady and covered the angle. Down the left side for Zeman. Zeman, number 11, gets it back to Yakushev, who's knocked down. Puck is on the boards, with Henderson losing it to Shadron. A roller right in front, they score! Yakushev, cutting right in front to make it 7-3. to three. This, this is absolutely a beautiful goal because is there ever a lot of beautiful work along the boards? Look at the stick work here. He makes two beautiful moves. Yakushev holds him on the post, goes with a big backhand. Yakushev is six foot one and looks like Frank Mahovlich scoring that goal. But what he tried to do, which he did so beautifully, is hold Dryden on the post with your forehand. Then he brings the big sweep. He moves the puck about 12 feet and throws it in the far side and the goalie doesn't have a chance. Well, the Soviet is certainly mean going a runaway of it now after Canada had really threatened in the earlier part of the period. Now another return rush by Shadron. A long shot. And Dryden stopped that and played it to one side of the net. Seven to three for the Soviet. Here they're coming in again. Another shot. And they're really flying high. Mihailov uh, had the try that time. Number 13. So he's not superstitious. Oledyev rolled the puck into the Canadian zone. The point lost it. Yakushev gets another try. And Dryden to stop the first. It's still there. Finally, they shoot it to the wing as the Soviets tore it on. Here again, Mihailov getting it back to Polidov. A mix-up with the point to one side of the net. A bumping duel. Here's a bouncing puck in front. Knocked off to the corner. There's going to be a penalty. A point mixing it up with Lechenko and Mihailov. There's an example there of total frustration by Team Canada. I don't honestly believe that anybody is intentionally trying to hurt each other, but there was a lot of sticks up around the head there. There was a lot of vicious checks there by Gila Point. Phil Esposito came across and hit Petrov on the head. But that's total frustration, Foster, and that happens in hockey. Team Canada right now, they've given it their best, and they aren't good enough tonight to beat the Soviets. It's as simple as that. 7-3 for the Soviets, and the point is in the penalty box. Cross-checking penalty. Only 19 seconds remaining in the game, and so it's just a formality. In any other hockey game, you would have seen a big fight there. The tolerance level by the Soviets is unbelievable. They're disciplined, totally disciplined athletes. They're told not to fight, and they will take anything. But they'll also score a lot of goals against you. 
Well, they've shown that tonight. Petrov slid one wide of the goal. Ori from the corner shoots it down the ice. Goose can let it go. Gusev goes back to recover. Gusev fed a forward pass at center ice. Glinov comes over onto the left wing, coming up at center ice. And the game is over. And the USSR have defeated Canada in the first game of an eight-game series by a score of 7-3. to three. The Soviet 7, Canada 3. The final score, the Soviet 7 and Canada 3. This is game one from Montreal. What I remember really about the forum uh, was just that sense of, of, uh, of, of, of sheer electricity and, and of this atmosphere that was just, it was, you know, it, it, was, the, uh, it was the inside of a balloon uh, and, uh, and, and the feeling was just pushing against the insides, you know, stretching it, you know, sort of tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter, just ready to explode. And uh, I mean, I had been in the forum many times, um, and and where you could feel the building and feel everything inside that building, and I don't remember it feeling quite the way it did. And so, no matter what the the other anticipation had been uh, in the previous month of how this was going to be easy and a lark and and all the rest of it, once game time started to approach, uh, the sense of enormity, the sense of importance, uh, the sense of excitement uh, just started to go. And, um, and, 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 and I mean, you can, you can tell it in that image, you know, of the, and, and I remember, you know, Phil Esposito describing that opening ceremonial face-off and where, you know, where he, as he said, he had to win that face-off. Uh, you know, ceremonial face-offs are not face-offs to be won. I mean, the, the, the dignitary drops the puck, the puck pretty much sits there, one of the captains picks it up, hands it to the dignitary, they shake hands, and that's the end of it. Well, Phil Esposito is, is there in that face-off circle as if there's five seconds to go protecting a one-goal lead and, and it's in the circle nearest his net. I mean, it's a face-off he has to win. Now, you know, that's not Phil unless the moment, you know, generates that kind of Phil. And so no matter what Phil was feeling in the month before, that's what he was feeling and that's what the rest of us were feeling at that moment. Now there was a nervous time. There was a nervous time, I'll tell you. I, during the National Anthem, I leaned over to Brad and I said, Brad, I think I just wet my pants. <laughs> I mean, it was awesome. All of a sudden, you stood there and I, I was talking to myself and I said, what is a kid from the Thistle Rink in Kenora, Ontario doing here? I mean, I was, I was in awe, you know, when you realized that the whole world was watching you. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty awesome thing. I think people, uh, today it's easy to, to forget that uh, back in 1972 we still had a Cold War going on, and uh, a lot of people, uh, uh, certainly, uh, I'm one of them, you know. This was a battle this, uh, between our way of life and their way of life. And uh, we know, having been in international hockey before, knew how they portrayed it. And, you know, every time they won, it was a victory for their system over our system. And so we would get into that game, and uh, that first period, things started off going very well. And uh, uh, we're hitting, and uh, I'm included. We're, everything that uh, is red that moves, we hit. Uh, the problem is, we weren't in game shape. We were a long ways from, from game shape, I suppose, what they were. And by the second period, when uh, you know we can hardly move, and and uh, I still can see Harmelov coming by and just f flying by, and uh, you know it's like waving the flag, saying uh, honk honk, <laughs> you went through a red light. But uh, they had that game conditioning, we didn't, and 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 until we got that, uh, uh, it was difficult. And and uh, by then we knew it that uh, you know we we weren't in the condition we needed to be to play a, a quality team. Is there a winner or a loser in that series? The winner is society. Our society against theirs. That's what I believe. 
And that's what drove me. Not country, not hockey. Because those guys were as professional as we were. I don't give a damn what they say. They were more professional than we were. Their whole life was that, even though they were in the army. <laughs> the frustration was coming out, and uh, um, there's no doubt about it that we realized that uh, the Russians were a good team. They played together for many years. They were young. I was 32. I think the average age of the Russians might have been 24 or 25. I'm not quite sure, but some of their top players were only 21 years old, 20, 22. Uh, and like Karlamov, uh, 24 maybe. He's been in uh, Olympic competition, played against some NHL hockey players, feels he's good as anybody. And uh, it showed. They, uh, they uh, came and made a very good impression. We start the game, boom, we get a goal. Within two and a half minutes, we're up two nothing. Uh, oh man, this is a cakewalk. Uh, Gary Bergman, my defense partner, we finish the, uh, out the first period, it's 2-2. Two -two. So we come off the ice and we're sitting there and he turns to me and he says, uh, what do you think? I says, we're in trouble. He says, yeah, they're coming at us in waves. I said, are they ever? These guys are in shape. They are coming at us. We're in trouble. It was complete shock uh, to everyone across Canada. I'm sure the fans were shocked. Uh, we were completely shocked as players. We were caught off guard. It was not a good night. I don't think many of us slept very well. We all of a sudden uh, had a reality check. Game one is over. We, we got blown out. Uh, what do we do from here? And um, I even remember uh, Wayne Cashman walked into the room when that game was over. Um, he wasn't playing that night. He walked into the room, and I think Phil was fairly close to me. And he walked in, and, and uh, Phil's eyes met his, his. And I remember Phil saying, we got problems. We got troubles. Like, we knew now what was ahead of us. Um, we knew we got ourselves into something here that uh, could turn out to be not the way we, we envisioned it. Um, and I think it all started to set in and as the night went on and the next day uh, we all realized that uh, already we're behind the eight ball and we got a long way to go. And, just, and we also realized how important game two was. Game two became critical.
long did it take? Pat, did you, you know? Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> no, really. Well, okay, that, that's, that's a good point. What about the, the atmosphere slash attitude you fellas had, or, or the whole team had, not just, before game one and after game one? Was there, was that, a, was that an eye-opener? Well, I think that uh, the hockey sticks that they used had Montreal Surprise written on it. So they must, I don't know what they knew that we didn't know, but apparently they knew something. So uh, um, I, I would think after the first game, we had to stop and, and think about where we went wrong and, and, and where, we, where we as good as what we, we were told we were. And we were told we were pretty good, and they weren't very good, but we found out differently. I, I think they were convinced that they were coming to beat us. Uh, you know, and it was very easy for them because nobody expected them to win. And if they do, they used to say we came here to learn, came here to learn. But uh, they had some pretty good hockey players. Uh, some of them, one of the best in the world, uh, and playing on the big surface. And personally, I really enjoy playing on the big surface. And I think our rink, are, especially in those years, playing in Boston and Chicago, was so small. Uh, now we got all the ring standard, but uh, playing on the Olympic surface, you need better players. You need more mobility, and uh, that's why you have the European player coming here, and it's always they're always the best player on the ice most of the time uh, because they're uh, they played uh, on a big surface. It's that international Canada Russia. If there was something very, I don't think it'll ever happen again. There are too many Russians playing over here now. If it's, we'll never get over, that was something very, very special. I've been quite a few cups as a player, and I've been on, on a two, two cups as a general manager in Montreal, and I don't think you can elevate yourself emotionally as high as this series. Uh, to me, it's the greatest event in my career. It's a, the 72 series. We had a question right here, sir, yes. surprised with the antics that the uh, Soviets pulled with Joe Esposito, like four in his room at three in the morning, did that, did they specifically pick on him or did it happen to everybody in all the rooms and uh, what other antics did they yeah. have? Uh, yeah, 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 I had calls uh, during the middle of the night, uh, they, they believe they uh, stole our uh, steaks, stole our milk. I had called in New York too. Stole our beer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were masters of delay, you know, you, you arrive at the airport there and they come on the plane and see what valuables you have to list everything you've got. So you got to wait there and you got to go wait for your luggage. They were masters of making you wait passports. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, we always seem to display a little more uh, adrenaline and intensity, but I think that kind of lifts our game up a little higher than, than I see theirs. Do you kind of think that, that helps? Like, I don't really see that in the Russians, right? And a lot of Europeans. Not, they just don't seem to have the same level of adrenaline or intensity when it comes to a crucial situation. Yeah. Know what you guys know. The good old Canadian enthusiasm compared to the, right. to, you know. Could you sense it, Bill? Could you sense that on the ice? That they... I found the Russians playing against us uh, very monotone. You know, uh, there was certain things happened on the ice, uh, you know, if you did that to a Canadian player, wow, you'd have an elbow in your face in a minute. But I've heard that they used to practice those type of things. Uh, Tarasov, who was an originator of their game, used to have face-offs and he'd drop a puck and then elbow them in the face and learn to control themselves. So I don't know how true that is, but I found them very uh, unemotional. They're just very bland faces a lot of time. But I would think that would take away from your game. I would think the way we play, Take away from our game, sure. I thought it was about game six or seven before we actually saw their face. We were always looking at their back. 